Get full access to over 20,000 episodes with your free trial. My Outdoor TV. Sign up today. The following is an Outdoor Channel original production. You don't love it, you just want to do it. Because it can be heartbreaking. That was a really hard shot. It's potentially the most frustrating hunt I've ever been on in my life. Oh. For over 25 years, I've been intrigued by harvesting and cooking food from the wild. Hormone, drug, and stress-free. I like to see my food running, swimming, and flying in their natural environments. I've crossed oceans, deserts, and jungles in search of the freshest wild game on the planet. I'm Mario Calpo, and this is Man Eats Wild. I'm deep in the mountains in the South Island of New Zealand to hunt the elusive fallow deer. Once a year during the rut, these animals come to life and the hillsides are full of croaking and fighting bucks, all vying for a mate. It's a perfect time of year to get amongst it and harvest one of these elegant animals. Hunting deer outside of the rut is like hunting ghosts. They're very elusive, they're trying to hide. They only come out during their feeding times, which is normally in the morning and in the evening. During the rut, these animals, they're going crazy. It's manic. The males are calling out for females all day long, giving away their location. It really is like the Super Bowl of deer hunting or the pinnacle moment that hunters all around the world wait for is that rut period. It's way more intense, it's way more exciting. It really is the favourite time for hunters to be out there. So it's day one. Been hiking up this mountain for the last hour. I'm just looking for a spot to actually camp up for the night. I'll get into this hunt tomorrow. It's gonna be tough. You know, these are free-range fallow deer, completely wild animals. First things first, find a spot, get settled in, get ready for an awesome week. Targeting an alpine animal is gonna be a lot more challenging to me, mainly because of the landscape. Very steep, very cold, a lot of open ground, which makes it difficult, especially with bow hunting. And New Zealand is so unforgiving. There is no flat ground here. So I've spotted a young buck with two does, and unfortunately he's not mature enough to take out of uh, the gene pool. So the idea is for us to obviously take out mature bucks that have done a lot of breeding. Definitely keep searching and see if we can find an older male that's more suitable to take out. Unfortunately, he saw me 
and um, it got away from us. He just ran away, as you would if someone was pointing a bow and an arrow at you. So that's uh, one for fallow and zero for man eats wild. I'm in the South Island of New Zealand hunting fallow deer, and so far these clever animals are getting the best of me. But there is absolutely no way I'm giving up until I get one. Nice big buck down there, about 100 yards from us, 120 yards. The wind is not in our favour at all, so I don't expect this to go too well, but we can have an attempt at getting down to the bottom there. Frustrating. We got to about 55 yards from that animal, and um, I think he just caught our scent. The wind's been moving around a little bit, so he just got up and got out of there. Got me by surprise. But this is this is really difficult. That was another one I was sure we were going to get. I'll tell you what, when we finally do get one of these critters, it's going to be a very well earned meal. Let me tell you. Devastating, devastating. There's a real special feeling about immersing yourself in a natural environment that you just can't explain in words. And that's what I feel every time I go out on an adventure. Every time I go on a hunt or a fish or a hike, I have a really strong emotional connection with the land. We all have that inbuilt inside us. It's a primal urge to just be involved and be in it. I absolutely love it, and I'll probably be doing this till the day I die. I've spotted a nice big buck up the top of that mountain once again. I think it's the one we missed yesterday by the looks of it, so it might be a chance for me to get a bit of redemption here.
unfortunately, this buck stayed just low enough behind these rocks so I couldn't get a clean and ethical shot on his vitals. I had to let him walk away. Damn it. Oh, that was close. He was a good buck, man. It's potentially the most frustrating hunt I've ever been on in my life. I really feel like just giving up on this hunt. It is just breaking me. I thought I had that one in the bag, man. But what do you do? You've got to just gather yourself and go again. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. It was a really hard shot. I had to tuck just underneath his rib to go through the front. And I'm 100% that got him. Oh. Right on dark. There's quite a lot of blood, so I'd be very surprised if I don't find a dead fellow here somewhere. Out of all times to shoot an animal, this is the worst. Right on dark, looking for blood trails is not my favorite thing to do in the world, let me tell you. Yesterday it actually rained, so a lot of this blood isn't sticking to the grass properly, but you know, there is no two ways about it. I am going to find this animal because there's no way I'm leaving this meat on the hill. It just may take a while. As you can see there, there's some blood. Okay, so we follow this down. There's a little bit more blood here. This is hard work. Looking for blood trails is not my favorite thing to do in the world, let me tell you. There he is. Yes. Got him. Awesome. Whew. Oh, I'm so relieved right now. The last thing I wanted was to not be able to find this animal. And it's a beautiful, mature buck. Look at that exit wound came out in the lungs. So the shot was good. It was a risky one, but it paid off. See, he's got all these tines, all these points. Hasn't been broken off from fighting, which is incredible. And he's definitely ready to be taken. Let, let some younger blood go through the genetics up here in the mountains. What I'm doing here, guys, is I'm making a little cut just here. I'm gonna take all of his cape off first and then harvest all the meat from his carcass right now. Take absolutely everything I can. And the rest will stay here to be scavenged by smaller animals. They'll finish everything else off. The bones will rot in to the soil to feed the grass and plants nutrition. It's about as efficient as you can get, really. This is 100% wild food. Doesn't get any cleaner than this. This animal has been eating green, fresh mountain pasture. No hormones, no drugs. Stress-free, just pure, clean, wild meat. Taking that whole backstrap and part of that neck muscle out. It's a 
fantastic bit of meat, honestly. So it's going to be a late night and it's going to be a very, very long walk back. I've got all my primal cuts ready to go. It's now just a matter of trimming them down. It's crucial that I get this done really quickly. If you are going to cape out and skin your own deer for taxidermy, you should let it set overnight if you're in a cooler environment because the skin will actually set and that gives the taxidermist a lot better material to work with. The other thing I've done is I've socked the legs out. So instead of carving or slicing up the arm, I go around it and that gives the taxidermist an extra bit of material to work with. At the end of the day, you're going to get a much better result. I know a lot of people out there think hunting is cruel and offensive and barbaric and whatever other words you want to wrap around it. What I think is cruel is putting an animal in a cage, pumping it full of nasty drugs, creating a sickly, overgrown beast to go sell off in the market. To me, that's cruel. The animals that we're hunting are living in their free-range environment. They're out in the open. What I think is much more ethical is going out and earning your food by hunting it yourself. You're catching a beautiful, clean creature that has had the ability to go out and breed and live a natural life as it should be. There's no two ways about it. Eating free-range wild animals is a lot better for you and a lot better for the environment. And at the end of the day, the closer you are to the source of your food, the better it is going to be for everyone. Today I'm super excited to show you guys one of my favourite dishes that I've created and it's a fallow antler pie. I'm going to be cooking this pie on the actual antler that I've harvested from a fallow. So the first thing that we need to do is get the fallow backstrap into a sous vide, which is going to really tenderise and slow cook that beautiful piece of protein that we worked so hard to get on the hill. So first you want to season the meat. We're going to put that in a bag. Then we're going to add some herbs in there. These are all fresh and wild from New Zealand. This is a broth that I have made with antler bones, celery, garlic, and all sorts of other beautiful herbs. This is concentrated flavor. And the best thing about it is we're not wasting any part of the animal. We're utilizing even the bones themselves. I'm going to seal this off and put it in my sous vide. This slow water cooking method really does enhance a lot of the flavours and it makes the texture of the meat super soft. So I would highly recommend getting yourself a cryvac machine and giving a water bath or sous vide method a go. It's time to get this saute started. You want to get some garlic, Spanish onion, portobello mushrooms that are wild from New Zealand and some carrots that a friend gifted me from their veggie patch. While that's simmering away, I'm going to caramelise some Spanish onion. Put that on low to medium heat. Give them about a minute or two, then we're going to add some balsamic vinegar. That's what you want. You want them to soak up all that balsamic. So while that's doing its thing, I'm going to take out this sous vide backstrap and we'll see what we've got in here. Oh, unbelievable. That is holding a serious amount of flavour in it. I'm actually going to save that and put that back into my mix in a little bit. Look at that. This is the kind of result that you get with sous vide. I can tell you right now, if you ate that, it would melt in your mouth. I'm at that stage now where I'm starting to get hungry because I've just got smells coming out of every pan. Add that fallow backstrap straight in there. Our balsamic Spanish onions stock. You can even chuck those herbs in if you want. The last bit and my favourite bit is the red wine reduction. 
You want that to reduce and it's gonna really saturate into that meat and you're gonna taste it later on. And as soon as all that red wine is gone, you know it's time to get cracking on the pie. So you wanna lay your antler down like so. You grab your filling, look at that. It's just comfort food, isn't it? The final stage is adding an Italian gorgonzola cheese, lay it on top, and then we all know that red wine and cheese goes together perfectly. Now it's time to wrap this bad boy up in pastry. You wanna make sure all those beautiful flavors are encapsulated in that pastry. Couple of tricks here. One is you wanna poke holes all through this pastry. The next part is an egg wash. This is gonna be like the super glue that keeps all this beautiful pastry that you've worked so hard to get on there together. Just paint the whole thing as evenly as you can. More on the joints than anything. Awesome. We're ready for the oven. Oh, wow. That is perfection. Beautiful golden brown finish on the top of that pastry and that awesome flakiness. Now for the moment of truth. Mmm. So good. Really rustic autumn flavors coming through. The cheese is just melted all the way through that meat. I can taste hints of red wine. Those herbs, they're all coming through. And look at the presentation. It doesn't get any more true to what it is. It's wild game harvested from Mother Nature. To be able to create such a unique tasting and beautifully presented dish after an incredibly difficult hunt up in the mountains, this is what I do, this is what I love, and I hope you guys can enjoy it at home for yourselves.